Hi, my name is Mani Alikani. I am Dean and Professor at CITOR Academy, and I'd like to welcome you to another session of CITOR channel. Today, as part of the Back to the Clinic series, I'd like to share with you a very interesting case. A patient was referred to CITOR clinic due to the complexity. Upon exam of the patient, we noticed that this young lady have severe mandibular deficiency, severe proclination of upper anterior teeth, that cause an overjet of about 15 millimeters, a severe deep bite, impinging bite that was causing attachment loss on upper anterior teeth, and mobility of the four anterior teeth that was pushing the dentist to think about maybe we should pull out these teeth and putting implant in those teeth. A patient had other problems that are common orthodontics problems, such as crossbite, such as crowding, such as spacing some places. Patient reported that she had orthodontic treatment before, but it seems that they never addressed the overjet because they thought it's not possible to correct that overjet. And during the years, this relapsed back to the original malocclusions that they had. And when we're looking at the pan, we could see the root resorption in some area where it can be explained by previous orthodontics treatment, a severe remodeling of the condyles that can explain the TMJ problems that the patient was reporting. The form of the dental arch, the severe curve of SP could go with the story of the deep bite that the patients had. And uh, especially the upper left one was not in a good position. It has so much attachment loss in the palatal side that we could see actually significant amount of the root. When we're looking at this X-ray CEF analysis, uh, we see the uh, severity of the skeletal class 2 and mandibular deficiency and severity of the inclination of the especially upper anterior teeth and loss of the lower facial height. So, how we can treat this patient? There is three series of problems that is very controversial here. First, the patient have mobility. Against a common understanding that the patients with the mobility should not receive orthodontic treatment, if the cause of the problem is malocclusion, correction of that malocclusion can increase the stability of the patients. So, after you uh, making sure that there is no acute periodontal problem and collaborating with your colleagues periodontist to make sure that uh, issue it does not exist. Mobility should not be or attachment loss should not be a reason for not starting orthodontic treatment. The second challenge here is that the patient is severe skeletal class 2. Classically, the best treatment for this patient is orthogonatic surgery. However, a lot of patients either cannot afford the treatment or they don't want to go through those surgery cases. And in general, if you look at the number of orthogonatic surgery that is done per year in the United States, it does not match the significant number of the patients that have craniofacial deformities. So how we can address the need of this patient? We cannot ignore that just because they don't want to go through the surgery. We cannot provide another treatment. And the third controversy would be the relationship between the malocclusion and the TMJ. Is the reason behind the pain and discomfort of this patient, is it originated from the malocclusion or it has other origin? Majority of the patients that have malocclusions and have TMJ, of course, not all type of malocclusion, but a lot of different type of malocclusion can contribute to TMJ, and this is one of those cases. So we decided to uh, provide a treatment that is non-surgical in these cases and see if we can improve the quality of the life of this patient. For this patient, we need a precision mechanics, that is, sectional mechanics was applied in the different areas through the free object design move towards semi-restricted design. We open the bite using anterior bite plates. We apply transverse forces to correct the cross bite. One couple system was applied to address the deep bites and many other mechanics in different condition. You cannot use continuous braces. In these cases, it does not take you to any place. You cannot use aligner in these cases. These cases requires very precise mechanics in the different area to address the problems that the patient has. But the most important part, we decided to do the neuroimmunomechanotropy or NIM that has been developed in Citor Academy to address the mandibular conditions to stimulate secondary cartilage in condyle, to stimulate the remodeling, to stimulate alveolar bone 
uh, formation uh, using different techniques that has been developed in Citor Academy. And the patient was in treatment for uh, about uh, two and a half years. And uh, the reason of this duration is that formation of the bone or remodeling of the cartilage is the time consuming process. Patients need to collaborate with the orthodontist during this treatment to make sure proper result can be achieved. Let's look at what happens at the end of the treatment. When we're looking at the end of the treatment, we can see uh, the class one molar and canine has been established. The inclination of upper anterior teeth has been decreased significantly. The proper overjet and overbite has been established. The most important part, the mobility decreased significantly and the attachment loss did not progress, not only did not progress, improved so that the, our colleagues periodontists now could go ahead and do some soft tissue grafting and uh, correct the contours of the tooth or if they needed bone graft also they can achieve it at this stage and when we're looking at the final pan we noticed that no further root resorption was observed and the condylar form is starting to improve significantly when we're looking at the CEF we noticed that the relationship between upper jaw and lower jaw has been improved significantly. The profile of the patient has been improved significantly. Remember, treatment of these patients usually uh, is not fast. You need to give enough time for the secondary cartilage to be uh, remodeled. You need to give enough time for the alveolar bone to be formed. So activation of these biological uh, responses are time consuming. Now let's talk about the retention. Retention of this patient cannot be done by S6 retainers or Holly retainers. They need a specific retainers. We do MA appliances to keep the relationship between upper and lower jaw and keep the coordination between upper jaw and lower jaw in the proper position. What lessons we learned from this case? We learned many things from this case. First, mobility and loss of attachment should not be a reason for not having orthodontics treatment. These patients can benefit from orthodontics treatment significantly by placing the teeth in the proper position mechanically. So always talk with your colleagues, periodontist colleagues, that as soon as they establish the patient that there is no active bacterial problem, you can orthodontically help them to establish the case. The second thing is, yes, orthogenetic surgery is very helpful in these cases, but if they cannot go through, you should not stop treating this patient you should not go through camouflaging treatment. I, I'm not very fan of camouflaging treatment. Uh, just uh, try to do a proper treatment to uh, increase the biological response to achieve the maximum correction of the occlusion without pulling any teeth out in these cases. Complex cases should not get worse by camouflaging treatment. The third things that we learn from these cases, that yes, small occlusion in many cases can and contribute to TMJ problem and correction of malocclusion is a proper treatment of the TMJ problems. We should not ignore this treatment. Not all TMJ is causing bar malocclusion, but majority of the craniofacial deformities can contribute significantly to the TMJ health and they should be controlled and treated by orthodontics. As I emphasize, the patient collaboration in these cases is super important. If the patient does not want to have treatment, unfortunately, you're not going to get the optimized result that you like to achieve. Uh, retention in these patients cannot be simple as Essex and Holly retainers. You need to have a specific retainers such as MA appliances that stimulate the correction of the vertical height and stimulate the correction of a mandibular advancement in these cases for a long time until the condyles and alveolar bones are all established. I hope you enjoyed this session of CITOR channel. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and subscribe and please don't forget to press the like button. Thank you.